What does that have to do with Barack Obama? If you look, and bear in mind, I do not speak for him. I am speaking about him. You may well find that I am totally wrong and that my projections and views on his future and what his values and sense of where we need to go as a nation could be somewhat, if not dramatically different from what I posit to you are the facts as they will unfold. But I think that I have enough uh, background and uh, understanding of him and the things that he has done with his life so far <coughs> to be able to tell you some things about the way he thinks and the way he sees uh, not only the American experience historically, but the challenges that face us and how to deal with them. If you look at one of the high points of his career up to now, one of the things that he has focused on very, very strongly is undercutting the power of lobbyists and special interests, whether it be in Illinois or in the, state, uh, in the United States Senate. Uh, his lobbying legislation is landmark, and the reason for that, I suggest, is because he has learned that legacy, that we have a government that is, if not dominated by, at least extremely influenced by special interests, not the least of which are those that are related to our military, a, an area where we find on occasion $600 hammers and $2,000 toilet seats. Those are the tips of an iceberg that I think he will understand undercut our ability to do the things that we need to do to make this society in our, of ours stronger, more responsive, and indeed repaired our infrastructure, which is crumbling and which we do not have the ability to repair, in a way that will change the landscape of how we view government and government's ability to be influenced by special interests in the future. I think that we have found a man coming into the White House who may well be the most intelligent individual ever to be there since Jefferson. And I don't say that lightly, but understand that there is a difference between intelligence and wisdom. And indeed, intelligence is simply the raw material of wisdom. I would be uh, less than candid with you if I said that just because he is extremely intelligent, and if you've read his books, I think that is a foregone conclusion, not subject to much debate. But if you read what he says, if you look at the positions that he takes, if you look at his worldview, if you look at his background and experience, you will find, I think, that he not only is intelligent, but he has the one quintessential element of a leader that I think is absolutely crucial, and especially in our times. And that is that he knows what he does not know. He knows what he does not know. And therefore, he does not take this messianic view that uh, some before him have taken, that they have the answers and simply need <coughs> to engraft them onto the American political scene. He is a man who seeks the best course, and a man who will reach out to whatever sources are available to him to give him as much information as he can get, pro and con, so that he can then decide and use that intelligence that he has to guide a course for us that he feels is a reasoned, responsible course. If you read in today's uh, USA Times that was passed out, um, he has uh, suggested a jobs program rather than simply a, a tax cut or a, uh, or a tax uh, uh, or a uh, payment uh, that was given as a stimulus package uh, under the early uh, late years of the Bush administration seven or eight months ago, he has said we need to do what, in fact, President Roosevelt did. He said we need to take people who are not working and put them to work doing the kinds of jobs that we need to have done to get not simply our economy back on track, but to get our country back in shape to put money into infrastructure. For those of you who hearken back to the New Deal, one of the things that uh, Roosevelt, among many, did to change the face of America was to look at our infrastructure and bring tremendous resources 
that gave us the Tennessee Valley Authority, that gave us the Hoover Dam, and gave us a tremendous uh, economic stimulus, even though the seeds of the Depression were so deeply rooted in our country that it took a war to really take us out of it. But I think that President-elect Obama has not only learned the lessons of history, but in fact is a historian himself. If you read his book, The Audacity of Hope, it is very, very clear that he is a lover of history. And the axiom that goes, those who have not learned the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them, if it ever was true, it is true now. We do not have the luxury uh, that we once had of being able to correct our mistakes in hindsight. When Woodrow Wilson announced our going into World War I, he said, we are going to make the world safe for democracy. I suggest to you that the world we live in today is less safe for democracy than it was when we came out of World War I. And indeed, a case can be made that the Versailles Treaty was such that it created the world not only that we have today, but created the animosities and problems that we have been dealing with ever since, not to mention the rise of Nazism in Germany. So, what I'm getting at, and what I think is important, is that historically, we know that we want someone who has learned the lessons of history because at the close of World War I, one person, no matter how crazy and dedicated they might have been, could account for the deaths of 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 people. Today, an individual with equal motivation and equal access to resources can kill millions. The world is a very unsafe place. And unfortunately, the United States' role in the world, and indeed how we are perceived internationally, has changed for the worse in the last eight years. And I say that not um, advisedly, but in fact because I have spoken to people that I know from one end of this world to the other, and consistently I hear from them that the United States has lost its moral standing in the world. And having lost that moral standing, we have lost our moral suasion, and we have put ourselves in a position where we are now looked upon as not the shining light of freedom, democracy, and, and goodness that we once were, but in fact are creating fear and animosity in countries from one end of the globe to the other. In addition to that, we have mortgaged our future to potential enemies. China holds enough of our debt to destroy the U.S. economy if they choose to do so simply by putting our debt on the open market. And so one of the challenges that he faces, and one that I fully expect him to address, is how do we not only create a society that is what it once was, and that is proud of our accomplishments, having the leadership in the world technologically, but also morally, ethically, and responsibly, that we have a military that is acting uh, not simply on the front lines of which we can all be proud, but behind closed doors in a way that does not sap our vitality and our resources in budgets that we are totally unaware of, let alone have the ability to understand. 